Hello, and welcome to Suitcase Coder, the podcast. My name is Laura, and I'm the host of this podcast where I share my journey, mistakes and all, from joining a coding boot camp all the way to becoming a freelance web developer. Now, I haven't made it quite yet, but I'm well on my way, and hopefully this career will help me get to my end goal, which has always been to travel the world. So if you're wanting to join a boot camp or become a freelance web developer or eventually travel the world just like me, then I hope that you can learn from my mistakes as I share my journey from beginning to end. And yeah, let's get started on today's episode. So first things first, somebody's letting me borrow this really cool microphone. I'll let, look, how cool is that? It's like super professional. So I think you should be able to hear me a little bit better than normally, which is kind of neat. If this is your first time listening, up until now, I've kind of gone through the process of making a decision to join a boot camp to make a career switch and kind of what that process looks like. So if you're about to start on a coding boot camp and you're still a little bit anxious about it, hopefully this episode helps you shake off those nerves and get started on the boot camp as confident as can be. So as always, I'm going to try to narrow this down. And this week I've narrowed it down to three different things that I wish I would have known going into the boot camp. So the first one is time management, which is key. It's major, like super important. So first time management. Second is get your networking on. Start networking before you join. And the third one is getting a head start on a little bit more of the technical things. Let's get started. As far as time management goes, this is something that I struggled with throughout the entire boot camp. So my boot camp was about six months long and it took me almost eight or nine, I think in total with pause days and everything. It took me way longer than it should have. And I 100% blame it on my lack of time management skills. So if you know that this is something that you struggle with already, put a schedule into place before even getting started. These are the three things that I wish I would have implemented way before beginning my bootcamp. So the first thing is definitely creating a block of time out of your day every single day. And whether that's Monday through Friday or seven days of the week, although I don't recommend that, I do recommend taking a break and making that time absolutely non-negotiable. The first thing I absolutely wish I would have implemented before even getting started was getting a better sense of time and time management because I definitely lacked that and it showed. On top of like stressing over learning new things, I was also struggling with managing my time and that just is totally avoidable if I think you follow these steps. So the first thing I would say is definitely block out some time every day or a couple hours a week and make that time absolutely non-negotiable. Whether you're a morning person or a night person, you want to schedule that time that fits best with, obviously you're like day to day. So if you have work, you want to make sure to schedule that time after work or before work. You can't just schedule it during your lunchtime because you don't even have time to eat and you'll be rushed. You don't want that. So make sure to block out time that works for you but make sure that that block of time is going to be absolutely yours to coat and nothing else. And another thing is give yourself enough time to get into the flow of coding because sometimes it's it's very like heavy. It's heavy curriculum. It's a lot to learn. You're going to be learning a whole bunch. So you want to get into the state of learning. Give yourself at least two hours. I would say that's a good minimum amount of time. Every boot camp recommends to block out a certain amount of time. Mine was part-time and they said minimum of two to three hours a day. I would suggest add an hour to that and say three to four hours per day to spend on your boot camp. First thing is block out your time. The second thing about time management is to let those around you know that you do have these blocks of times that are non-negotiables, that you are going to say no to a few things and that they shouldn't get offended or mad or upset if you can't make it to certain things. Because for six months, you are going to be dedicated to your boot camp. And if you're not, then maybe you're just not ready to participate yet. And I understand life gets in the way, but as long as you can help it, block that time out and don't let anybody interrupt or take that time away from you. So if you have an event or birthday or something of that sort, you're going to have to be able to say no. Hopefully they'll be able to respect the fact that you're trying to do something for yourself and that you've blocked out. certain amount of hours per week, but definitely letting them know ahead of time 
I think is pretty important because then they'll be a little bit more understandable when they send out the invite knowing that, hey, they may not be able to make it, but I know why. You're going to be happier if you devote to the time that you had originally committed. And the third thing is to make sure that time is non-negotiable. Just because your best friend is really craving a pizza and they don't want to go alone, they want you to come with you, be like, sorry, bro, I'll get pizza with you next time. I can't right now. This is my non-negotiable coding time. The second thing that I wish I would have done before joining a bootcamp was to start start building a network or a community of developers, of mentors, of people in the tech industry or tech field to help me out throughout the bootcamp. So, so my bootcamp was entirely online and Throughout the bootcamp, I did make a lot of friends through the bootcamp's Slack channel, and that's so important. If your bootcamp has some way of communicating with other students, absolutely do that. If you can get it on that Slack channel or meet people in your cohort beforehand, start getting like building those relationships before the bootcamp starts, and then also start networking and finding people in the industry that may be advanced. Maybe you can find a developer who's like at a senior level who may be able to take 30 minutes or an hour out of their day to help you out if you ever get stuck. And that doesn't necessarily have to be tech people. Like maybe you have a couple friends that you go to when you're struggling or when you're like feeling frustrated and you need a break, somebody that you can be like, hey, let's go bowling. I need to get out of my headspace and take a break from computer world and go do something fun. So find a supportive system both inside the tech world and out, but it's especially within the tech world, because having a couple developer friends that will help you out when you're struggling can help you advance so much. I had shout out to this one person who spent hours with me when I was trying to learn Node and React. And if it weren't for this person, I would not have advanced at all because I just I hit a wall so hard that I like was stuck and I couldn't get I couldn't think past a certain point and having somebody just walk me through even not even like advancing but just walk me through the mistakes that i've made helped push me forward so much and helped me fast forward what would have taken me maybe a week took me two hours with this person so finding your network and having that support system built before you get started and knowing that you can go to them and having them expect it to like if they already know that you're going to be joining this and going to be asking them for help maybe they'll be a little bit more open to helping you out before you ask them. So that's the second thing is the importance of networking and building that community beforehand. And the third thing is how to get start like technically. So there are certain things that you know you're going to go through in a boot camp. So for starters, make sure your computer works. Make sure that your computer is capable enough of installing any softwares you may need that it installs maybe like video chat cameras. I use it. I've used it a whole ton throughout my journey just like I said either by people helping me or by joining in on Q&As or joining on Slack channels. So getting a working like webcam and or microphone. Also, I actually started on a 2009 Mac. Like, I'm not saying go out and buy a new computer. Mine was crippling, old, and about to break. And towards the end, it did break. Luckily, it broke after I graduated the boot camp, but it was hanging on by a thread. Where it becomes troublesome is, let's say you can't make any updates. Let's say something on your computer is so old that it's stopping you from installing the things that you need to advance in the course. That's when okay, maybe it's time for a new computer or to clean out your old computer. Just make sure all of that's in order before you get started. And I think any bootcamp will be happy to answer that for you before you get started. Like if you call and say, hey, like what do I need on my computer before getting started? They'll let you know. Another thing that I found super helpful was just getting a head start on the actual coding process. So I spent a couple months on free code camp and code academy and all of these free coding resources, just wrapping my head around the idea of coding and what it is and what these languages means and all the different like vocabulary that comes with learning to code. Getting those out of the way when I started the bootcamp helped me a ton because it just put me like one foot ahead by knowing what a text editor was or knowing what an HTML element is or how to pair CSS with HTML. So these are just some basic things that I'm sure you'll go through 
the first couple of weeks in your boot camp, knowing a little bit of HTML and CSS and knowing a little bit of the lingo that surrounds learning to code, I think not only builds confidence and allows you to like advance a little bit better and more confidently, but I also think it just gives you a really good head start and really good like foundation to begin with. And it, it opens up your brain to this new world that you're going to be learning. So as far as getting a head start tool wise, just make sure everything's up to date. Everything's working. Make sure you have your, oh, this is one that I haven't covered. Make sure also that you have your environment set up. So whether it's in a classroom, you want to make sure everything that you take with you to your classroom, you have all that set up. So chargers, headphones, computer, notebook, note, notepads, whatever as far, or if you're like doing an online bootcamp, if you work at home, then you want to have that desk space, that area set up before getting started so that you know when you're spending time at that boot camp or learning to code, you take your things and you sit in your space and you sit there for your blocked out time and you're in the flow, you're in the state of learning and learning to code. And I think that just dedication, dedicated space, dedicated time, that sense of community will really help you advanced, advanced, advanced. So yeah. If you feel like I've missed anything, or if you have any other tips or advice on what to do before getting started in bootcamp, definitely let us know in the comments below or reach out to me on LinkedIn, on YouTube, on whichever platform you wish. Before we go, as always, I wanna leave you with an action item and a weekly challenge. This week's action item is to find yourself three people to build a community. They can know each other. They can be complete strangers to each other, to you but find yourself a support group that you know that you can lean back on when you're doing a bootcamp. Um, so I would suggest maybe one friend, somebody to take breaks with and be like, I need a coffee, I need to go bowling. Find a friend who is a developer, a more senior level developer who can help you get unstuck on some things that you may come across. And the third one I would suggest is find a classmate or somebody who has gone or is going through a similar journey that you are so that you guys can kind of support each other and motivate each other to move forward. So my action item is find minimum of three friends to act as a support group for your bootcamp journey. And this week's coding challenge is to find if a string is a palindrome or not. And a palindrome are words like mom or race car, where if you read them one way, it's the same as if you read them reverse. So race car spelled backwards is race car. Mom spelled backwards is mom. In a function using JavaScript, you're going to input a string and I should be able to put in race car and it returns yes, it is a palindrome, or I should be able to type in Texas, it should return, no, it is not a palindrome. So that's this week's challenge. Remember to head over to my website at www.soupcasecoder.com, where you will find every week's weekly challenge along with links to my YouTube channel that hold the challenge solutions. Side note, I'm a little behind on those, but I'll be getting those up um, very quickly. If you want to watch these podcast episodes, head over to my YouTube channel. You should be able to find me at Suitcase Coder there as well. And if you're enjoying these videos and want to see more, definitely like and subscribe and comment and let me know how I'm doing. If you have constructive criticism, I'm always free to listen to that. Hopefully this podcast helps you out and yeah, have an awesome week until next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>